what are what are some of the differences you've noticed you've you've prayed in the coptic church many times now you've attended our liturgies you've attended i think some of our other services like this um what are some of kind of the major differences besides like the the obvious you know different language different hymns and things like that um that, that you guys have noticed yeah like i want to say like an obvious one is like for us, like the second you enter, you know, an Eritrean Orthodox church, your shoes are not on. Like you cannot <laughs> enter with like your shoes on. Um, so yeah, like there's like a like a cubby that like, you first enter the church. There's like a you know that you could put your shoes out or you could put it on the inside the cubby, and you walk in and you know it's all carpeted. So like you you know your shoes are off. Um, I want to say that's like the first thing that I noticed too. I was like, oh, okay, we could wear our shoes until this point and then, you know, take it off when you, yeah. But um, attire as well, like that's huge. Definitely. That's really big. Like in our church, there's no such thing as wearing jeans or like a shirt or something like that. Like women are kind of expected to wear like long dresses, um, mm -hmm. kind of all like of the same design, if that makes sense. Like nothing that's like, um, like long dresses, yeah, past the knees. Um, and then like with the head covering, we call it an atala, but, um, and that's kind of, I feel like I've seen differences like within the Coptic church, it's not like, as soon as you go in and, in an EOTC, you're supposed to wear like a head covering, not just when you take communion. That's, I mean, that's what I've noticed at least at St. Mark's It's just like, usually like, um, like the ladies will do it like once they take communion. But for us, it's even like outside of church, like outside of service, like, all the women, I think just from tradition, like they'll still have the like the head covering on. Another thing we talked about before was the you guys when you came to the Coptic church, you were a little bit taken aback by the fact that literally everybody was taking communion. Like it was yeah. just <laughs> which yeah. to me sounds okay, that's normal. Yeah. I take right. it. You guys have seen me and I'll come in there like ten minutes before and I'll go to <laughs> <laughs> uh, forgive me, forgive me guys. I'm a bad role model, but um <laughs> But yeah, it's this. Are we too casual with it, or what? What's what, like, what is it like in the Eritrean church? The so do you want to go, or um, I'll start off by saying you'll be lucky if you see three adults take communion that Sunday. Wow. Like, it's very like, honestly, like when I see it from the Coptic church, it's honestly so beautiful, like how everybody's taking communion because that's you know, liturgy without taking the communion is literally like, why are you there, you know? Why are you there? you know, asking for the Holy Spirit to come and like, you know, bless the, the, you know, communion. So like, yeah, I mean, it's crazy how, again, you'll be lucky if you see like two people, adults, and Mel, you could like continue on about like, yeah, adults. yeah, no, seriously. Um, I, I like, I feel like the hindrance is like, for us, you have to confess. I mean, you guys have to as well, of course, but like for the older generation, at least like they have to confess before they take communion. And I know I noticed like in our church specifically, a lot of them haven't like gone past that to be able to take it. And so that's why you won't see a lot of like adults um, take mm -hmm. it. So like when you go to an EOTC, like during communion time, you'll see like two spectrums, like, like one end of the spectrum is like little kids, young kids, and then kind of babies and then a couple of kids like from our age like mine and salams and then the other like side of that spectrum is like really like the older like generation like the older people kind of like in their 60s 70s um mm. yeah it's, but never like the people in the middle yeah i mean we'll see like toddlers but like we don't see it from like our parents age group or anything like that mm -hmm. tradition like how we've been mentioning from like the beginning of how tradition really does play a big role in this in our like church which can't sometimes could really be for our disadvantage because um a lot of the times when you know like the older um people like i'm talking about like you know grandparents age mm -hmm. there they think like oh yeah of course you take communion when you're old because now you know you're closer you're about to, you're about to you're done. Done. this could be your yeah. last one <laughs> yeah uh. like, that's why like when it's our parents age for example like um it's unfortunate because like a lot of the times, like I want to say over 50%, the woman is ready to take communion. However, the husband is saying, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Like, let's wait another year, another two years, because I'm not sure if this is like how it is in the Coptic church, but, but in our church, for example, like if the, like a, the woman in the marriage who wants to take communion, 
the husband has to also confess at the same time. So like that's like a big hindrance because like usually she's ready and like the the husband is the two are one, so they have to kind of do it together exactly. and confess exactly. together. Yes. Yeah, oh, not that's like- very interesting. I think the Coptic Church that's lacking in that kind of. Uh, uh i guess uni- unity because yeah i've seen you know the wives would take communion and you know the, the dad's not even at church right mm-hmm. um or vice versa um okay so that so that's really a big point the confession part you think that's one of the biggest things and I is that like- is that like like the priest would be like what you haven't confessed so no or internally the person just like i i'm not gonna do this internally like the priest if anything every single sunday one of his messages is literally please like confess Mm. so that you guys can take communion like wow i feel like that's all i hear my dad say sometimes so it sounds like the the reverence towards the holy communion is just really high like i would say yeah i like i yeah i think very much high and and that makes sense with the other things you've said like taking off the shoes mm -hmm. covering um the emphasis on confession Mm -hmm. um i think i think it's interesting to me because i think there needs to be a balance the other way in the coptic church i think the frequency of communion is actually not a i want to like phrase this delicately i don't want to say it's like not a good thing but it you don't uh, for me it's become and i think for a lot of coptic people it's become a little like too like a normal. Uh, routine you know it's yeah like, routine. i'm gonna That's do this on sunday again again